If you're ready to experience more peace and joy in your life, if you want to feel more comfortable in your own skin, and if you're ready to discover and expand on your energetic gifts and personal power, you're in the right place. So here's your host, Kelly Sparta. Hello and welcome to the Spirit Guides podcast. We're so excited to have you here. I'm Kelly Sparta. I'm your host. I'm a transformational shaman. And with me, as always, is Josh Radawan, who is our co-host and one of my students and one of my instructors, actually, in my programs. And so uh, we are going to be here to talk to you about spirituality, personal awakening, personal growth, personal healing, all the fun stuff on, on today's Awaken episode. So today we're going to talk about spiritual awakening. And that one's going to be so much fun because we are talking about how it works, right? So we're going to talk about, first off, what causes spiritual awakening. So for different people, it's different things, right, Josh? It is. You know, we, we had talked one time previous about my personal spiritual awakening, which was a rude spiritual awakening. <laughs> so for me, I, you know, and this is why I ended up on the spirit doctor's doorstep is because I was very spirit sick, you know, spending years of my life, you know, in addiction and, you know, the, this internal battle of the two wolves just going at it constantly for years and years and years. It, it finally all came to a head for me in, uh, in 2017. And the, 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 the beautiful part of how rude, uh, why this was, awakening was so rude. His spirit gave me so many outs. They're like, all you have to do is stop doing this. And I was like, no. So the, <laughs> the one, <laughs> the one, the one true, you know, one of the truths that I, I speak to, and I don't speak to absolute truths very much, but I will, I will say that in my life, there is an absolute truth I have came to is that spirit will give you so many outs of, of lessons, uh, you know, as we, as we go through them and progress and, eventually the lessons get harder and harder and harder. And I'm a hard headed and very much in my warrior still working through parts of that archetype myself. So, you know, that, that awakening for me really came from a place of, I couldn't do this anymore and I didn't know how to, how to stop myself. So spirit awakened me very hard, very fast with little coddling because I was an unruly kid and so, you know, that was that was a, a major part of my awakening was just having it felt like the rug being pulled up. But, you know, like when I look back at it, I see all the signs, all the synchronicities that were leading me to this path. But I just chose to be an asshat instead and, you know, expand my energy <laughs> container even farther, I guess. Maybe that was the soul contract bound with that. So... <laughs> Yeah. So for me, my spiritual awakening was actually triggered by a minister coming to my doorstep with a fresh convert. And he showed up on my doorstep. Now, so let me give you some context. So my mother raised me in the New Age movement. I've been doing this work since I was five years old. I went out and got married to an atheist when I was 21 and stupid. And... Uh, <laughs> And he, I was with him for seven years. And so I sort of left my spirituality behind for those seven years and just sort of, you know, did what I did. And this random pastor from a fundamentalist church shows up on my doorstep one day and he's like, you know, can you tell me what you believe? And I said, you don't want to know what I believe. And he's like, no, I really do. Now I came up through the Christian church. My mother was not Christian, but all my, uh, we would be moving all over the country. And so her policy was, I will take you to whatever youth group or church you want to go to. Just don't make me go with you. Right. And so I would go to different church youth groups and go to church with friends and whatever. And so I had been through Ugh, a lot of the major Christian religions by the time this, this came around. So I spoke fluent Bible, right? And so this guy sits down and I'm, I, I look at him and I'm like, okay, here's the deal. I said, I'm happy to have this conversation with you, but I want to warn you that by the time we're done, he's going to have a crisis of faith, the new guy that he was brought, that he had brought around with him. And he's like, yeah, let me worry about him. I'm like, okay. And because my husband was inside, we sat on my French porch stoop. 
and talked for two and a half hours. We had this amazing philosophical conversation about spirituality. And he and I had this great, you know, interchange. And, you know, in the end, you know, he knew he wasn't going to convert me, but it was a great conversation and we both enjoyed it. And in fact, his convert was having a crisis of faith when they left because I had been taking all of the belief structures and sort of breaking them down and making them sort of a broader context. And, and, but that was really the thing that brought me back to spirituality was this, this random Christian minister that, that did outreach, which normally you're like, ah, get off my porch. Right. (laughs) But, but that one was like the thing that brought me back. And I started I went and took a shiatsu class and I got my Reiki certification. And then all of these gifts started coming back because I was being open to them again. And then I had my midlife crisis and quit my everything. And (laughs) and I was quarter life crisis. I was 28. It was my Saturn return. So for those of you who don't know, when Saturn comes back into the place that it was at in your birth chart, which is every 28 years, It is the great disruptor and it will disrupt your life. And I am now starting to come back into my second Saturn return. I'm a couple of years out from it. And uh, so, you know, buckle up for me. But yeah, the first time through, I, I literally, I woke up, I had done the American dream. You know, I had the big house, the, the dog, the cars, the (laughs) trophy husband. I was a pillar of my community at a successful business. I was president of the local nonprofit and I woke up and I went, I freaking hate my life. I was burned out from my business. My husband and I were in a power struggle that just was not getting fixed no matter how hard I tried. And we were in this and, and, you know, I just, I was hiding in the nonprofit. I was working 40 hours a week in the nonprofit to hide from my life. And I just woke up and I was like, I can't do this anymore. And I just leveled my life. I did. I divorced my husband, husband made him take the dog, sold the big house, sold the business and moved out of state to meet, to live with a bunch of people I met at the Renaissance fair. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, my former business partner said I went off and joined the circus and he was not wrong. Right. <laughs> so. Uh, but I just I knew that it wasn't the life I wanted. And I was like, okay, well, if this isn't the life I wanted, I, I'm just going to start from scratch and, and figure it out, which is not something I necessarily recommend, because it, it tends to like pull all your financial resources out from under you and all the other pieces of that. But, but it was the right thing for me to do at the time. And I ended up living in a house with a bunch of people who turned out to be shamans and witches and, you know, fairy people. And that's where I learned ritual. That's where I learned how to do circle magic and all sorts of fun stuff. And I got introduced to Wicca and I came through Wicca into shamanism now. And, and you, you referred to me earlier as the spirit doctor, which we hadn't said before, but yes, I am the spirit doctor. And, um, <laughs> but yeah, this is, you know, for me, the spiritual awakening was the guy on my porch you know, followed by me going, I hate my life, right? And saying, well, there's got to be more to life than this. And then going out and seeking out, there's got to be more to life than this. And so, you know, a lot of things happen along the way in that. But the thing that made me laugh the most when you were telling your story (laughs) is is that you were like, nah, I'm not going to do that, right? (laughs) And I swear to you, the first 10 years of my spiritual journey were my guide saying, do this, and me saying, fuck you. (laughs) It's It's still very much a part of my process. You know, like we talk a lot on the the back end of things, and she's like, oh, honey, I've been there. (laughs) uh, You know, you you, you develop that relationship more and more over time, and you begin to kind of understand why it is they're leading you in certain directions, even though you're like, no, I don't want to. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> exactly. It's like my inner two-year-old is going, eh, no, yeah. no, no. <laughs> <laughs> and that comes with that warrior archetype, right? Like we like to blaze our yes. own path at times, you know, like I know best and I am all, like, you know, so, you know, yeah. I think that's. That's that's part of the awakening process is learning to, you know, that to co-create with spirit and maybe, you know, and it really does lighten the load. <laughs> it does, but it takes a long time to get there. <laughs> it does. 
<laughs> if you can be smarter than us and get there faster, you will be better off. So just so you know. <laughs> so I second uh, you know, that motion. Yeah. Everybody's <laughs> spiritual awakening is going to look a little different, right? And so, you know, your spiritual awakening will look different than, than ours. And, you know, for some people, it's a major life crisis. Interestingly, I find that men come into this work more often out of a major life crisis, you know, the death of a parent, the divorce, the loss of a job, you know, things like that. It's, it's, there's like some major event that causes them to take their nose off the grindstone and go, wait a minute, this isn't okay. I don't like this. Right. And that's generally when I find men come into this work and the younger men, not as much. The younger men are coming in more just out of consciousness. But if you're talking millennials and higher, that's typically been the case. And then women just tend to, to be in a place of, uh, they often come in through burnout, right? It's like, I can't do this anymore. I'm doing too much. I'm giving too much. I've got nothing left. I'm overwhelmed. I just want to lay down on the floor and rock, right? <laughs> I just want to rock in the fetal position for a minute and cry. And that's often when women will come into the processes when they're overwhelmed um, uh, or overdone in some way. And so, you know, to know that that's what's true for you. And obviously there's no, there's no be all end all for everybody, but these are the things that tend to trigger spiritual awakenings and sometimes it's just you have a contract with spirit that says now <laughs> and they just go, oh, by the way, hi, we're here. And you go, crap. Right. So I'm screwing around. Yeah, there's some, <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah. So I'm pretty sure I had a contract with the guy who came to my porch to say, OK, it's time to wake up now. And so, you know, that ended up being very interesting. So. As you're stepping into your spiritual awakening, you know, let's talk about what it means in your life, right? Because what it means is, is it means that everything's changing. Let's just start with that. It means that life is never going to be the same again. And can you turn your back on it? Sometimes. Okay, sometimes. Sometimes you have a contract with spirit and they're like, nope your mind that happens a lot in in shamanism you know people tell me all the time oh i want to be a shaman i'm like mm, not if you can avoid it you don't <laughs> like being a shaman is a lot of work and unless the spirit grabs you by the throat throws you on the ground and says you're mine then you know if you could do anything else i would recommend it <laughs> doing your own work absolutely being a shaman oh think that one through right so uh, and the reason for that is that shamanism is is very unforgiving in a lot of ways. It's that, you know, spirit will knock you on the, they'll tap you on the shoulder, then they'll knock you on the head, and then they'll clue by for you to the forehead and knock you on your ass, right? Yeah, it's like, no, you're really going to listen to this one. So can you break those spiritual contracts? You absolutely can. But you have to recognize that there's a reason you made them in the first place, and you have to decide whether or not that's something you want to cancel. So but you always can change your mind. That's always an option. So if you decide that you want to cancel a contract because you're overwhelmed or whatever, do not feel like you're trapped. Okay. That actually will make it worse. So having uh, basically what the core piece is of learning how to navigate your spiritual awakening is learning how to hold your power. And so that is key component of doing this work. And a spiritual awakening in your life means that you get to work in concert with spirit. And so that means learning how to come into relationship with spirit, learning how to talk to your guides. It means learning how to understand the language of spirit, which is often or almost always in the form of symbology. And that means you need to learn how to speak the language of symbology, which is it's a whole nother language, right? It's the, you have to learn mythology. You have to learn how, what different symbols mean to you and what the language is specifically between you and your, your guides. And we'll talk about that on another episode. But there, there's a whole new world to navigate. And this is one of the reasons why when people wake up, they tend to go into this massive, knowledge consumption stage 
It, and you're really just trying to orient to this new world. It's a safety mechanism that has been engaged. And it often results in a spiritual addiction. It's like, I must listen to 50 podcasts and I have eight books next to my bed, all of which are half read. And I got six more books next to my chair, all of which are partially read. And they're all different topics. And I just pick them up randomly and read a little bit. And then I read something else. And that's just how I do it, right? This is how it works. And you're going to all these different classes and you're going to these retreats and you're studying with teachers and you're uh. watching YouTube videos and, you know, it's just like consume, 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 consume. And th the challenge is that there's rarely a break to integrate because you're too busy consuming and because your life is insanely busy to begin with. And then on top of that, there is, we, I talked about this on the first episode, we talked about the fact that the silos in which you learn things. So if you st study Kabbalah, or you study Reiki, or you study metaphysics, or you study wellness, or acupuncture, or anything like that, they all use different language. And so do you realize that some of the things that you've just studied in two different practices are the same thing? And oftentimes you don't because it's very different language. And so this is the sort of thing that you want to pay attention to as you're going through. And this is one of the things that we want to talk about. And so, you know, getting, getting oriented is the hard part. And so that's what this podcast is here to help you with is to get oriented. So in the course of listening to 15, 20 episodes, you should have a really good sense of orientation about the spiritual world as we go through this. Yeah, you know, I, I want to say, you know, one of the things that happened to me after my awakening and really just, you know, understanding that I needed to do some deep level healing so I didn't keep creating these same scenarios in my life was that I went down this ensuing bunch of rabbit holes just over and over and over again, you know, and I, I really spent six months of that time trying to gain some footing, you know, like post post that awakening process. And the truth is, is, you know, like other than what actually came to me naturally, I just spent a lot of time, you know, not really accomplishing much. You know, there, there were, you know, like for me, the angels came in at, at a certain time and, you know, th they began to work with me. Uh, but it was the funniest thing is my, my phone opened up to the Spirit Sherpa podcast one day and shamanism had been coming up over and over and over again. Uh, once you said I got clue by four you know, for a good six months until one day the phone just opened up to the podcast. And, you know, it's, you know, when I, I think I had a lot of signs previous to that, but once again, sometimes I'm hard headed and I, my symbology library is woodpecker means I'm hard headed and I miss the point. So that's the one they throw at me all the time. So, yeah. <laughs> what, what are some of the, uh, you know, like symptoms we can feel like, what was some of the symptoms maybe you felt during the spiritual awakening, like physical well, I don't know that I experienced physical symptoms per se. I think for me, it was more, I was having this awakening to spirit again, especially with my divorce. When I got divorced, I spent a year just in great gratitude for my life going, oh, I can breathe again, right? I'd been working so hard, twisting myself into a pretzel to make myself into the person I thought he wanted me to be. And it wasn't working for so long that I was just like, oh, I can't anymore. Right. And so having this moment of just, oh, I can just be me is it, it was such a relief. And then my my intuition really started to just explode at that time. And I was getting these flashes of things. Like I remember I was attending a spiritualist church and I, I remember one day I was running late and I was like, eh, maybe I just won't go. And I heard very clearly in my head, no, you have to go. She won't be here next week. And I went, who won't be here? And then they were like, nope, that was it. That's all they said. They were like, nope, you have to go. And I was like, okay. So I went and at the coffee clash afterwards, this woman and that I knew came up and her mother was there visiting and I, you know, I was meeting with her and talking to her and I was like, Oh, you're the person I had to come for. And she's like, what? And so I told her what happened and she was like, oh, you're my sign. And I'm like, what? <laughs> she said, I asked for a sign to prove to me that this stuff was real and you're my sign. And I'm like, cool. Right. <laughs> 
And that was it. I was her sign. And that's why I had to come that day. And I was like, all right, you know, but, but stuff like that started to happen a lot more where I, and, and I was, I was going to the spiritualist church. That's the church I was going to. And, um, and they always had mediumship from the pulpit. And so the people would come in and, and the person would do the readings and I would always get extra stuff. And so at the coffee clash, I would go and say, Oh, by the way, I heard this, or I heard, you know, that I got this extra or that extra or whatever. And I would just give it to them, you know, and I, I was still in my head. I was going, Oh no, I'm just a student of, of, of human nature. And I'm just making these extrapolations. And, you know, I was, I was trying to poo poo it away in my own head. Right. But, but that's what was showing up for me as I was just getting more and more information. The more I opened, the more I, I quieted myself because that was the other thing that had precursored this time was I had been working ridiculous number of hours. And the more I quieted myself, the more I wasn't on edge all the time in my home, the more I was in gratitude, the more all of this stuff opened up for me. And so for me, that was a lot of the experience. For, for some people, spiritual awakening can cause anxiety. And I won't say it causes anxiety. I'll say it amplifies it amplifies the anxiety you're already feeling because almost everybody who has some of this stuff, uh, you're usually already dealing with a certain amount of anxiety. And so, you know, can it be scary? Yes, it can be scary. I remember uh, in between moving into the house with the, the, in between selling my house with my husband and moving into the house with the people I met at the Renaissance fair, I actually bought another house in the interim there and that house was haunted. And so the ghost that lived in that house to get my attention was shaking my bed. He was vibrating my bed. And you want to talk scary? Yes, that's scary, right? And I, I literally, I was like, I got up and I was looking to see if there was, you know, a, uh, a train going by that would have come for the, for the shaking. And no, I checked to see if the furnace kicked on. No, this is my first night in the house, right? And I finally just, put the covers over my head and said, leave me alone. And it stopped. And I was like, okay. And so I was taking a psychic development class at the time and talked to the person. And she was like, yeah, this is how you deal with that. And I'm like, okay, great. So, but you know, that sort of thing. I, I bought a house that was haunted. <laughs> you know? um, and I ended up talking with the ghost, making friends with the ghost and the ghost looked out for me. So you know, that's, that's some of the things that can happen, but, but it also can be scary. It can be anxiety inducing and you're already anxious to begin with because you, you're in this space of trying to feel safe on a day to day basis because, you know, we're all empaths and that feels really overwhelming when somebody's upset in your presence. And so that can feel very, very unsafe in a lot of ways. And so adding the step into a space that you don't understand and you don't know how to navigate can be a little intimidating, right? And so, yeah, all of those things can happen as part of it. They don't have to, but they can. And then, you know, there are some physical things that I didn't personally experience, but other people have, which is, you know, you can, you can end up with some depression or Although I will say the depression was probably already there. So depression is, is a complex issue, but it, when you wake up and realize that you've been unhappy for a very long time, it's pretty depressing, right? You either get very angry or you get very depressed, one or the other. And so, yeah, there's a moment that you will go through that. And, and that moment may last a moment or it may last a few months, right? As long as you're doing the work to fix it, eventually it, it, it clears, right? Nausea is another question I've heard from people. And nausea is an interesting one because people are like, can spiritual awakening cause nausea? And it's like, mm, no, but doing deep level spiritual release can cause nausea. And as we affectionately referred to it, the shamanic shits, because you're clearing stuff out of your body. I've seen people throw up, you know, people have gotten diarrhea, people have gotten nauseous, there's all sorts of ways in which it impacts the body. Your gut is the second brain, right? So when you're clearing emotional stuff, the gut will will respond to that. Some people can have weight loss or weight gain. 
And I say weight gain is often because people are looking for more insulation between them and the world. And so they, you know, more grounding. If they're running a lot of energy and they don't know how to hold it yet, they'll, they'll gain weight to get more grounding. Weight loss is often a function of the anxiety and the stress and the things like that that were already present, uh, but just get amped up when you go through your spiritual awakening. Um, vertigo is sometimes a case, uh, because not because it's a spiritual awakening symptom, but because people, people have a tendency to want to leave their bodies and stay there. And when you leave your body, you are not grounded. When you are not grounded, it's very easy to lose your balance. And that's what vertigo is. So, you know, that can be a factor. Um, emotional pain was another question. And just so you know, we're getting these questions from things that people ask on Google because, you know, that's what we're still in the beginning of the podcast. But if you have any questions, we want to hear them come to the pad podcast website at spiritguidespodcast.com and ask your question into the speak pipe, just press the button and talk. But we're, we're getting these off of Google right now. And so emotional pain is another question that people ask about does spiritual awakening cause this? And no, it doesn't cause it, but it may bring it up. It may bring it up to be released. Uh, and so here's the thing you got to keep in mind. If you think about your emotions instead of ex experiencing them, instead of feeling them, then you are stuffing your emotions ultimately. And when you have your spiritual awakening and things start to come up for you, you will often have those emotions come back up. And those come back up to be cleared and they don't have to be analyzed or anything else because they're from years ago. You don't even know what they're related to anymore, but they do need to come up to be cleared. And so sometimes that emotional pain will be present and come up to be cleared. The, the good news is it doesn't have to last forever because you don't even know what it's about anymore, right? So you feel it for a couple of minutes and then you're done, right? So, you know, people, people get more anxious about this than they really should. And I know I'm going through a whole list of symptoms of things that could be horrible and whatever. But what you need to understand is that a lot of the stuff is already pre-existing in your in your experience. It's not a function of the spiritual awakening to begin with. And so you're already dealing with it. This is not new. This is not different. This is not unusual. And the other pieces are, you know, they happen to some people, not all people, and nobody gets all of them. So, you know, don't be too intimidated by this process, right? The, the last question that I saw on there about what can spiritual awakening cause was physical pain. And the answer to that is eh, maybe. Again, this is something where the emotion is trapped in the body and therefore the, the trapped in the body shows up and it may trigger physical pain as a result of that, especially if it was related to physical pain that you experienced in your life. So, you know, if you got punched in the stomach by bullies all the time, you might have stored your anger about that in your belly. And when it comes up, the pain in the belly may come up with it, right? So, you know, that's that's the only kind of physical pain that I've seen happen in the spiritual world. So it's, it's rare. It's rare that that happens. But could it? Yeah, theoretically. Okay, I've been talking forever, Josh. You have anything to add to this? <laughs> you know, it, it's funny because as you were talking about your awakening process, and it's funny because we're like polar opposites. Like you went into this, you know, like I went into this deep level breakdown and you're like, oh, my life is gratitude and all these things. And, you know, but mine was, uh, you know, the, really the exact opposite of that. And you know, but th th there's beauty in both of that. It's because you had done a lot of inner work before that awakening, you know, like you had this life that was kind of, you know, like you said, from a very early age, you had had all of these, you know, teachers, Ram Das, you know, the, you know, Abraham, you know, Esther Hicks, all these, all these things that have, you know, throughout your life. And I just had a bunch of brutes that I drank beer with excessively, you know? Um, so, you know, when, when I, when my awakening, you know, as you were listing a lot of those symptoms, you know, like I, what I was coming through is did like, it was, it was really an amplification of everything that I was trying to shove down. And once that dam burst, it was, 
you know, a, a little bit of work to, to get it back under. I was actually diagnosed with schizophrenia after my awakening because I started hearing voices and all these things. And, you know, you tell that to a doctor and you're going to can't do that. You can't tell that shit to a doctor. <laughs> uh, but, you know, like I, at that point of my journey, I was really like, because I, you know, like uh, the fourth wall. Well, first of all, I, just, I found there is no wall. The wall is an illusion. So when everything yes. came crashing down, I was like, I need some help and I need it quick. And I, you know, when you look for a, a spiritual coach online, you get a litany of people that, you know, it looks very suspicious to say the least uh so you know like i i was i i've always been suspicious and i've always done my my homework as, as to far as to who i'm going to work with my recommendation if you have experienced any or one of these symptoms reach out because the, you know the welcome to the woo program is is perfect for you know really navigating this process with ease because i will tell you the three years of my life when I went through the awakening to when I stepped into the program was rough and it was rough because I didn't have a, a way to really navigate everything that was going on. You know, like it all came at once. So I just, you know, like my energy was so frittered and, you know, I was really fractalized, you know, I, you know, like what I went through as I, I really believe is my, my journey through dismemberment, which I know that's a very rough word, but what it is, is it means my soul broke into many pieces. Scare people. <laughs> We're just going to scare people too much. They're never going to want to do but it. it. <laughs> it's not as bad as I, it sounds. I swear to God. It, it you know, it, it, it is. Yeah. It, it's a, it's a terrible word, but you know what? It, 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 it's a beautiful process. And, and what I mean that by that is, you know, like we, we go through the, all these experiences in our life that bring us to this, this moment, right? This moment of change. And we get to put ourselves back together the way we've always wanted to be. And that's beautiful. You know, I know the word is terrible and I, I will, I'll even refrain from using it again, <laughs> but uh, you know, uh, this I is I'm really, process, I call that process foundational deconstruction. We'll call it that. <laughs> that, that sounds so much better. <laughs> I've right? never liked the word. I've never liked the, I've yeah. never liked the word either. Um, so I, I, I love this last question that, that that's come in is like, how long does a spiritual awakening last? Because I'm interested in knowing this uh, seven years in, I feel like life has just been filled with a continuous amount of those aha moments, you know, like as, as I've progressed on in, in doing the work and really, you know, looking at all of the pieces of myself and the way I operate and the way, you know, once again, the way I desire to operate, you know, like I, I, I don't feel like it ever stops. Uh, you know, I don't know what, what's your take on this? <laughs> well, uh, almost 50 years in <laughs> 20, 20, uh, 26 years into my hardcore spiritual awakening work. 50 years into my general study, I would say that no, it doesn't end. Well, no, I'm going to, I'm going to modify that because it does end for some people. Okay. So there's, there's a stage that you go through. So people come in because they're trying to get away from their pain. And so they will do the work until they get out of pain enough. And for some people, that's where it ends. For some people, they're like, I'm good. That's all I wanted to do was get out of pain. And that's perfectly fine. There's no requirement to go further, right? And then there's the next stage where uh, people will go, okay, I, I look how much better I feel. How much more could I do, right? So you become, instead of negatively motivated, you become positively motivated. And it's like, oh, how much more can I do? And I'm, I'm reminded of the Encanto, what else can I do, right? I, I love that movie. Anyway, so that's where you go to the next stage, right? And then there's another stage after that, that is you hit a point where you start to recognize that if I continue on this path, there are things I'm going to have to give up. There's, there are sacrifices I'm going to have to make. And that point is a challenge point for, a, that's where a lot of other people drop out. And you haven't hit this point yet, Josh. So <laughs> he's like, what's this? What's this? And so for me, that point was hitting a, a moment where I recognized that if I continued, and at the time I was single, and I recognized that at the time, if I continued 
on my path from where I was, that I was going to eliminate the vast majority of partners that I would have at potential partners, because they wouldn't be at the level that I was going to, right. And, and there was just no way that I could have a partner who wasn't keeping up, right. And especially since there are so many fewer men in the industry and in the work and, uh, and which was very true a decade ago, we're getting more men in now, but, um, but it was particularly challenging, right? And I had to sit with that question for quite a while to say, what's more important to me to be fully who I am, to be on my spiritual path, to fulfill my mission on the planet and possibly be alone in my life forever or to be partnered. And ultimately I decided obviously here <laughs> that, that this was more important. And I gave up on the idea of ever being partnered again. And, you know, I, it took me another six years to find my husband. So, you know, th there's a point at which you come to a, an evolution where you are actually saying, you know, I have to make a choice and there will be a choice point. And then there's another point that you come to after that, where you have to look at yourself in the mirror. And especially if you come out of a Christian construct and, and ask the question, am I evil? right? Because that's, that's a question you end up with eventually as well. And you have to look that one in the face because, because, you know, we're taught that we have original sin, and we're taught that we are sinners having to make up for everything. And we're taught, you know, all of the things that we're supposed to hate about ourselves. And so there is an internalized sense of, oh, I'm inherently evil, and I have to do something to make up for it. And that's the, the piece that you will eventually have to face as well as you go through this journey, if, if you stay on the path long enough, you know, and ultimately, there is a, I, I, I find that the people who make it through all of these stages are the people who are the most freaking stubborn. <laughs> I was having this conversation with another spiritual teacher that I know and, and really respect. And, and uh, we were talking about the differences of the people who, who make it to further, uh, you know, studies and, and uh, the core, core common uh, commonality was stubbornness and uh, perseverance and, you know, fuck to fuck you with this, right? It's like, <laughs> fuck you. I'm getting there. Come hell or high water. Right. It's that there is that energy that really fuels the people who make it really far in the journey. And so, you know, and you can stop anywhere along the way. It is not required to do the entire journey. It is not. There is absolutely no reason why you have to do something that feels too hard. There are many lifetimes and you can take this journey in any one of them. And, uh, and, and you never have to. I mean, this is a virtual re This is the ultimate virtual reality experience in the physical realm. And so, you know, we're all just playing a virtual reality game here anyway. So we might as well enjoy the process, right? So anyway, so how long does the spiritual awakening last? As long as you engage it. Okay. That's the answer to that. However, I will say this, and this is your warning. This is your fair warning, which is probably too late by now. But in case this is your second episode, or this is, in case this is new to you, I will tell you this. Once you have learned to speak the language of spirit, you will never be illiterate to it again. So you may refuse to read the signs, but you will always know what they say. So you need to know that going in. There is a certain amount of no going back to this because... You can ignore it, but it doesn't mean you don't know it. And that has its own impact. So there is a way to stay blissfully or not really blissfully ignorant because <laughs> you wouldn't be here if you were blissful to begin with. Let's, let's be clear. Right. <laughs> but so, but there is, there is a, a benefit to being ignorant because the universe is more patient with the ignorant, but uh, yeah. So that's, that's kind of the piece there. And then, I just want to give you one more piece, which is to keep in mind that your spirit guides are your support team while you're here on the planet. Okay. They are not your parents. They are not your authority figures that tell you what to do. They are your 
a virtual reality guides who are here to make sure that you're having as much fun as possible on the planet during your stay, right? They're your tour guides. So try and teach, treat them that way because my authority figure issues were the things that had me saying, fuck you to them over and over again. <laughs> so. Same Z's. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Which reminds me, so, I should probably write a letter after this of apology. Because <laughs> 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 they've led me to this day. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, we don't need a letter. That's enough. Thanks. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> the good news is, is that they don't care if you yell at them. So that's a bonus, right? That is a All bonus. All right. So I think that's everything I want to say for this episode. Do you have anything to add? You know, just one thing that, that came up, you know, what the universe falls in love with a stubborn heart. I really, I really do believe that. Uh, that was something that came up over and over in the beginning of my awakening journey. And the universe does love a stubborn heart. Yes, it does. So, all right. Well, that's all we have for this time. We'll see you next time. Have a great one. So that's it for today's episode of Spirit Guides Podcast. Head on over to iTunes, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen and subscribe to the show. Every week, one lucky listener who subscribes and posts a review on iTunes will be entered into a drawing for a $10,000 value grand prize and a private reading with Kelly Sparta herself. Be sure to head on over to spiritguidespodcast.com and pick up a free copy of Kelly's gift and join us on the next episode. Oh,